Hello, friend, and welcome to season two, episode number seven of the VIP Collective. I am your host, Corinne McDonald, and on today's episode, we sit with Natalie Ho, director of event sales for Oliver and Bonaccini. Oliver and Bonaccini is one of Canada's leading restaurant and event groups. Managing both restaurants and wedding venues throughout the city, Natalie sits down with us to discuss event security, insurance, and of course, the importance of your guest experience. So buckle up and let's go because this is my conversation with Natalie Ho. Welcome to the VIP Collective, and for everyone who's listening and watching, we are with Natalie Ho, Director of Event Sales for Oliver and Bonaccini Hospitality. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. And all these cameras in our (laughs) audience. Hello. (laughs) Um, So for people who may not Mm. be aware, and it may be a very small amount of people, but why don't you give the audience a little bit of information about who Oliver and Bonaccini cool. is and what you guys do. I would love to. Please do. I think we are always educating people on who ONB is um, because I think a lot of times we get associated with our big ONB sign, which is at, you know, Young and Front, and everybody knows us as, oh, the Cafe Grill. So I love telling the story of ONB. Okay. So um, ONB actually started um, when... Peter Oliver and Michael Bonaccini open Jump Restaurant. So Owen B's roots are in really like fine dining mm-hmm. and in sort of the Toronto restaurant scene, mm-hmm. um, which is something that I really love about the company. So at our core, we're like just a bunch of hospitality kids um, that want to provide great food and great service to people. So we have uh, Jump Restaurant, of course, which is where they started, and then opened places like Canoe, um, Auberge, um, Peter had already had, um, they opened Canoe, Biff's. Uh, Then they went through the Cafe Grill sort of era Mm -hmm. um, and then started going back to opening unique concept restaurants. So like Lenya, which is one of my favorites. Um, It opened Maison Selby recently at Fleur and Sherborne, uh, which is really cool. Um, And then kind of morphed into events again. So restaurants first. Restaurants first. Then like catering and events kind of happened all at once, but events is what, uh, the venues is what really took off for us. Mm -hmm. Um, And then catering kind of being our last foray into the world. Do you think someone called them and was like, I'm having a wedding, can you guys, your food's amazing, can you do this? Is that what, I'm assuming. Yes, so someone's like, I want Canoe to cater my wedding. And we're like, well, surely we can do that, right? And so I think that our story really comes out of we're all about meeting our clients' needs, right? And sort of this hospitality piece of like, we just want to do right by people. And so let's bring our food service to their house, to their backyard. And so I think that sort of sparked the vision of O&B events. So I'm sure people have probably been to restaurants that are O&B restaurants. So what are some of them? Sure. Yeah. So (laughs) go. Oh my gosh. Okay. (laughs) There's 19. (laughs) My favorites like Canoe, Jump, Auberge, uh, Auberge de Pommier, pardon me, that's my short form. Um, we have Lenya Maison Selby Liberty Commons, which is out in Liberty Village. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's that. like a pub, like mm-hmm. really, gr- really great pub food. Um, we have Luma. We have like the Canteen. We yes. have Bannock. Mm-hmm. We have Parcheggio, which is uptown. Mm-hmm. We just opened Babel yes. a week ago, which is also uptown. Saw that. Um, Maison Selby. I think that's it. Yeah. For me, I get that it's just about how can we keep doing like the good things that we're doing, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. um, I think the people that are kind of at the helm of the company and just like they're just so passionate about mm-hmm. food and, you know, yeah, we have like two French restaurants, let's say. We have Biff's and we have Maison Selby, but like they are entirely different in their menu creation in like the way that that food is executed mm-hmm. and in the way that they look. And I think that's what makes me excited about what we continue to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love this like unique concept thing we're going with because it's just, everyone knows Maison Selby, but a lot of people don't know what's O&B. And I'm totally okay with that, you know? Um, Because we get to be cool, we get to be, we are cool. I always say that, like we're a young company, right? I think so often we get maybe perceived as being more conservative. Right. um, When in fact, we have monkeys on the wall. Right. There's different, it's the same brand, but yet you've got different feels. Exactly. So depending on what vibe you want to go for. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about event venues that you're involved with, and then we'll go from there. Our first venue was the Toronto Region Board of Trade. Yes. 
Uh, that's also where I was a specialist way back in the day. Um, and when I was a specialist there, we did 11 weddings. The menus are super you know, approachable. Minimums are easy to achieve. It's a yeah. great spot for a wedding. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Arcadian, of course, yes. which uh, we are really excited to finally be almost out of our construction phase. We have a foyer. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. it used to have those escalators going yes. down to the bay, but they're gone. Oh, they've been removed? Yes. Oh, as part of the construction? Yeah. Oh. So we have a whole foyer. So it's just yours now? It's just, it's just a foyer. Oh, you can wow. sit there a call it's really exciting oh wow okay. i know it seems like a small thing but it really it's is huge. like a, a big deal yeah um so that's really exciting we have the carlu of course mm -hmm. um we have malaparte at mm -hmm. the tiff ballet box um and then we also have the village loft which is up at bayview and shepherds we opened that about a year ago mm -hmm. so are you handling a lot of the wedding like tours venue tours or what's your role mm -hmm. in like what's before we even i want to know about yeah. you first tell us a little bit about how you <laughs> okay, got into cool. this and then we'll go in yeah sure sure so i actually wanted to be a high school history teacher okay my team will tell me that it makes total sense um if i could give them gold stars i would uh so i was studying to be a teacher and i got a job at the omb cafe grill at baby village mm -hmm. as a host and I'd never worked in the restaurant business. I'd been in retail and I just fell in love with it. I love like the energy of a restaurant and just like, it's just always buzzing. Mm -hmm. And I also really fell in love with like the O&B sort of culture and values. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite memories was uh, we always had to show people to the washroom and like I took it very literally. <laughs> I don't know why. I would, we had stairs. We have stairs there. So I would walk people down the stairs and like hold the door open. And they'd be like, are you coming in? <laughs> but it never occurred to me that that was too much. Like I was like, this is what we do here. You're holding um, the, it just got a little awkward. Like a <laughs> little too far. Like I, I became the washroom attendant. Yeah. So, you know, I think like that whole mentality of like going above and beyond, right. it really resonated with me. And yes, I love that story of like going way too far above and beyond. And right. Like there are boundaries. But uh, yeah, so I fell in love with it. And then, you know what? I kind of just forgot about teaching. And I just kept, continued to pursue um, the hospitality business. So I worked in like throughout that restaurant in various positions. I worked at Jump as a server. So I learned all about like our wine program and all about our food and like really learning it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that point, our events department was growing. So we had a team that just executed events on private dining and they were we just had started the board of trade and so i got a job as um, like on a mat contract at the board of trade mm -hmm. as a specialist and like literally never looked back uh it was just my jam yeah. you know um i think like the organization the people aspect like mm -hmm. just selling um the you know just diving into details building relationships it just worked and the environment. with me it the was environment. like 100 percent, like the family aspect of totally. it and like, and like selling a product i believed in which yeah. is the other piece you know coming up through the restaurants and seeing it at the ground level mm -hmm. like then you're just like this is this is it yeah. you know wow. so yeah so i was there and then um we acquired arcadian so mm -hmm. i was sort of led that project and that's really i call that like o and b and my tipping point yeah of realizing wow this is a, an industry i got to meet like i got to work with everybody then you know that was one of my career highlights like yeah. working with all the planners working with you know all of like the music suppliers and just learning about mm -hmm. who everybody is and what they can do um, and that's when i really fell in love with like the events business and i think um, that's what you have to know is like you have to know what everybody does in 100%. the business because everybody's going to come be coming to you at an event right yeah. so you need to know what the dj needs and who they are I learned so much. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, you need a power drop. Okay, like, yeah. that's going to cost an extra $2,000. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I really wish I had thought of that, you know? And mm -hmm. obviously, you know, luckily I'm backed by a company that believes that, like, we don't spring things on people. If I make right. an error, then we'll pay for that. We get it, right? But just that learning as you grow. And mm -hmm. I always say that learning curve for me was, it was Everest. Like yeah. I learned so much in such a short period of time, and it's it was so invaluable. And when like, did Arcadian? That open? was in 2012, I believe. 2012. So yeah, yeah, there's just so many people that I would thank like yeah. along that journey that I yeah. still am in touch with today. But that where I really like, you know, I cut my teeth there, mm -hmm. where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm in this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that was such an amazing experience, and I was there for a few years, and then I actually started managing teams so kind of jumped into a different side of the business where yep. it was more about 
the business. It was about the people development, the HR, the sales, um, which all also really jived with me. I went back to school for business and really wanted to make sure that I had a more rounded you know, portfolio as I was taking on these new roles. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fast forward a couple of years and now I'm sort of overseeing a national team of 45, which is crazy. 45 people? Yep. Wow. And again, like I've had these moments where, you know, I'm in Calgary and I'm on a call in Edmonton and I'm like, (laughs) how did I, what? Like, (laughs) what time is it? (laughs) Yeah, one, totally what time is it? But yeah, Yeah. it's been such a amazing journey. Mm And again, one that like I wouldn't have ever anticipated just coming into it, like being like, I'm just hungry to learn and this is just what I love to do. And now I get to, again, do what I love, but hopefully teach a lot of other people Mm -hmm. how to be really great. Just bringing it back to those core values of O&B, which has been a big part of my mandate is like, how do we just get back to hospitality Mm -hmm. and like caring about people and caring about this industry and just really investing our time mm-hmm. in like what matters. And that's what people pick up on, right? People pick up on a company that actually cares about their customers. For sure. And who's walking through the door. Yeah. Their clients for weddings. For sure. And so, and that's something that you're now overseeing with your team yes. is to make sure that that's, and t- it goes back to teaching because you want to teach history and now you're teaching. There you go. And hopefully <laughs> the, history history <laughs> the history of kindness. And the history and of kindness. And the history of hospitality. So, so how many years has it been then for you So I'm 15 years Wow, in April. that's amazing. Yeah, Congrats. which is crazy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about how you are incorporated with the wedding side of things. Yeah, for sure. So if some of the clients are looking at maybe the Arcadian as a yeah. space, which one, which space do you feel is maybe one of the more popular ones? For sure, yeah. So Malaparte continues to be... I love this. Yeah. And I haven't no. had the opportunity to shoot okay, there yet. we're going to work on that. But I love that you can see the skyline. Oh like, my there's gosh. There's so many unique things. It is spectacular. With that, yeah, with like that the rooftop terrace is rooftop terrace, yeah. stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the space itself, we call it like, it's like a jewel box because mm-hmm. it has this wonderful ceiling detail. So it's just so designed for you, yep. um, which is really, really nice. And I think it's just like, it's a solid choice. You know, the team there execute flawlessly. Yeah. The menus are a little bit more elevated um, when we originally opened it, we wanted it to be like canoe, um, but like a wedding venue. So like mm-hmm. really high end, um, but not reflected in really high end prices. So um, yeah, Malaparte for sure. Arcadian as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely, you know, we've done a ton of weddings there. We have found that over the years, there's just so many great new wedding venues. So mm-hmm. it is getting harder and harder for us to maintain, you know, having the same amount of weddings all the time. And of course, we've been under construction. So mm-hmm. we are looking to make some enhancements next year, which we're really excited about. And hopefully, cool. like, because that's the other thing with venues and restaurants, like you constantly have to recreate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because everyone else is changing. Everyone's modernizing. So we have to be like, OK, you know, this was cool eight years ago, but mm-hmm. it's not cool anymore. So mm-hmm. we need to be investing in our infrastructure in order to keep up with the trends in time. Canoe, for example, we're actually renovating Canoe in January. Oh, wow. So okay. again, just like refreshing aesthetically the space. Mm-hmm. I've seen renderings and they look really like sleek and I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. So yeah, restaurant weddings make up a lot of our wedding business. So between Auberge de Pommier, Canoe, and Jump, yep. I would say are sort of like our three biggest. Mm-hmm. And... I love like restaurant weddings. I really do. Um, I think that they're just so approachable. I don't, you know, there's, there's an just something about them. them there's I an intimacy, like. and it's a bit more simple. Mm-hmm. And we find that we have all kinds of ranges of clients. You know, I've I've worked with so many clients that have redecorated our entire space and put in their own chandeliers and like yeah. built floors. And I'm like, okay. this is amazing. And then I go to jump and there's beautiful floral arrangements and I'm like, this is beautiful too, you know? So right. it's so amazing that we get to work at these different like scales yep. um, and with all different budgets and clients. Like I think that's one thing that is a bit unique is we get to expose to all of that. I wonder if some people don't realize that you can actually do a little bit of customization in these mm-hmm. spaces. Totally. Uh, in the restaurants? In the restaurants. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've also done events with planners in restaurants where, yeah. you know, we try to be as accommodating as possible if someone's like hey we actually don't like your carpets can you roll them up if that's something we can do we will do it you know so i think that it doesn't have to be fixed and Mm -hmm. static i think that there is still room for 
you know, maneuvering and like manipulating the space. That's neat. Um, I like that. Which is cool. Yeah. Where I find the restaurants are a little trickier is customizing menus. This okay. is something that I learned a little bit over time because, you know, in our, in our venue world, mm-hmm. we're like, name it. We'll figure it out. You know, our restaurants, they're, they're restaurants. They are designed to produce the menu that they serve. That they have. And I think that I have sometimes seen that it's a little bit trickier to get, you know, that entire culinary team that's used to just banging out their a la carte service to then, you know, flip gears and be like, hey, guys, we're going to do this custom like, you know. So I try to always communicate that to my teams and our clients that way of just saying, you know, if this is what you're looking for, we can totally do that. But you should have your wedding at Canoe at, at Malaparte and like maybe not Canoe because this is right. Canoe and this is Malaparte. Right. And that's sort of sometimes where we try to navigate based on what people's priorities are. Yeah. And what they are really looking for. So they kind of, yeah, you need to know what they're looking for so you can send them in the right direction without 100%. just putting them in a restaurant that's actually not going to be catering, like the proper catering for them or the right fit for them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. And we talk a lot about learning what our couple's priorities are. Right. Right. Because I think that's so important to the planning process. So... Sticking on planning process, yeah. are you and your team a set of planners mm-hmm. or people going, I want to get married at the Arcadian, they call you up yes. and there's a planning option or are you guys, how does it work? Good question. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I don't think that we're planners. No. Um, in our venues, and our restaurants, mm-hmm. we are like... We are planners in the sense of like, yes, we can advise you. We have a lot of experience. We've seen a lot of weddings. Yeah. But I'm not a floral expert and I'm not a design expert and I'm not, you know, but I work with amazing experts that mm-hmm. can help guide people right. in the right direction. And I think it all just comes back to, you know, the couple themselves and what their priorities are. A lot mm-hmm. of people, they don't want to plan their wedding. They don't have the bandwidth to do so. Okay. So I think that our you know, our event specialists, they they have a lot on their plate in terms of just facilitating the sales cycle of their venue, yeah. of, you know, helping communicate the, the client's needs to the culinary team and to the front of house team. So, um, and a lot of times they're not on site. The way O&B runs, we're not on site and everyone's different. So it's always good as a client to understand what is your person's role Mm -hmm. at that company? Mm -hmm. Because it could be different from me to, you know, to Berkeley, to Drake or whatever. Mm -hmm. So at O&B, what is your role in my wedding? And we would say, we're going to help you up until the day. We're going to help you plan the logistics, make sure you have the menu, you know, you have an agenda for the night. But on the day of, that's kind of like, then we're going to run it. We're going to feed you. We're going to, you know, execute service. But we aren't necessarily going to put out your floral arrangements and we're not going to, you know, design your gift table and that sort of thing. So I find that it's always good to be like, what is the expectation? Mm -hmm. And then what is it that we can facilitate? And then I often find there's that gap Mm -hmm. of like, okay, you might need more than we can provide. So where are we going to look to fill that? Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we can advise them to say, based on what you need, I think these are some great planners you could work with. Maybe it's just a day of, maybe it's more month of full service. You know, there's so many great options that our planners are offering. So that's where we might advise them from there. Okay. So it's more of things that are specific to the venue. 100%. Anything that is outside of the venue is Mm -hmm. not within your realm whatsoever. No. And over time, I've just accepted what my expertise is. Yeah. And that I love calling other people and being like, hey, mm-hmm. this is a you thing, you yeah. know, take yeah. over. Yeah. Um, and I think that that has helped our people be freed up to focus on what they need to focus on. Which, which is the is, service yeah, of the Yeah, the guests service, the responding to inquiries, mm-hmm. like just making sure that we're keeping that going and then getting to work with our amazing suppliers who do such a great job at what they do. Do you have a team of people that you refer? For sure. and yes. florists yes. and people that have been in the building, that kind of thing? Totally. We do have a it? list. We are continuing to work on it. We're always looking to um, keep it updated and like add new talent. Mm-hmm. Um, but for sure. And we are trying to engage our team with our suppliers because I think that that's a really big piece, right? Like, there's just such an incredible talent pool mm-hmm. nowadays yep. doing, especially what my team does, like being an event manager, being an event specialist. So when you say event event specialist, yes. run me through yeah. like 
four key things that you guys do yeah. that people probably don't know you even do? Yeah, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, so our titles, I, I think the industry, they're just like a weird title. So yeah. I compare our event specialist to um, maybe what like a conference services manager would do in a hotel. But okay. one thing that's unique about O&B specialists is we sell and we detail. Yeah. Okay. So some people just sell, some people, we do everything. Okay. okay. So our specialist would take a client from the initial inquiry stage all the way to the event date, okay. um, which I think is something that we do a little bit differently. Um, one of our really key focuses for our specialists, and it comes back to like this hospitality piece that we've been mm-hmm. trying to do is integrating restaurant culture into our cycle of service. Mm-hmm. So we're always looking for what we call moments of truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, moments of truth are like ways to go exceptionally above and beyond mm-hmm. for our clients. It's what makes us all kind of get like the feel goods mm-hmm. a lot of the time. The and goosebump that we, moment. 100% mm-hmm. that we really encourage our team to do this. We all want to feel connected to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that us allowing, you know, like a connection for our team to say like, yes, we're planning events, but what is at the heart of that event? Mm-hmm. It's somebody's wedding. They're creating a family. This is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we connect to that? Which I think is something that we're always trying to dig into. Right. Um, So I do think that's something that is unique to O&B. And I know a lot of other companies do an amazing job at client services with something we really focus on. Um, And it's like super high volume. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of our specialists are, you know, putting through a very high number of events a year. So they are constantly working on events and so, so are there situations when the menu it is too far in advance to sit down and do tastings like yeah for sure or I do believe so I mean and it's interesting because our different businesses kind of behave differently um so like in our restaurants you taste your menu a month to your wedding date hmm. that is that is close but again You've eaten at the restaurant, so yeah, you know what say, the food is. Everybody like, the trusts, restaurant's like, there. Like, so yeah, there's sort of that where yeah. because the restaurants are a little bit more seasonal, like seasonally effective, more changes happen that we do it really close to the wedding date. In our venues, we're tasting off season. So usually we book the venue first. We don't do a tasting before people book. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you taste sort of like in gen- like Q1 or Q3, depending on when your wedding is. Your wedding, yep. In the catering world, we taste before we book. And again, that's just the way the catering world works so we sort of follow suit in that way right um but i absolutely believe that in making any real decision about your wedding two years out is tough it's tough because you know when i got married there wasn't instagram Mm -hmm. like imagine that right Mm -hmm. that you kind of go from uh how much can change in, in a year how much trends change you know what i did 10 years ago I probably wouldn't do today, right. you know? So I think that there is that element of, you know, understanding what needs to happen now mm-hmm. and what should I wait on because there might be new information that I need in order to make a decision. Mm-hmm. I think people are concerned about price, yep. of course. Of course. But again, any like business that's in it for the people is not going to like, you know, we had this minimum wage impact, which everybody who in a business world is listening to this understands what that meant for us Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. um so a lot of our prices did increase they had to increase however we honored a lot of people's contracts like we as a business just absorbed those extra costs because we didn't believe that it was the right thing to do and that is how we govern ourselves and um yeah so all of that to say two years it's not the right time um and something i was thinking about is you know, as consumers, perhaps our role is figuring out what is the, what can I expect from this experience, Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't think we ask that question frequently enough in any scenario. Mm -hmm. I'm buying a house, like what should I expect Mm -hmm. in this process? You know, as as a wedding consumer, I just booked a venue. What should I expect? Like, what do you need from me and what am I going to receive from you? Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's like a utopia. But, you know. I love that, yeah. Yeah. I've seen some other companies have collateral like that where it's like six months out, we're going to do this. And I think that that's so great because mm-hmm. it lets people know that like you don't need to panic. We've got you. Yeah. We're going to make sure that you hit all these deadlines so that you're going to have a successful day. It's putting yourself in their shoes. It's yes. like when we do films, we yeah. always put ourselves in the position sure. of the viewer, as weird as that sounds. Totally. So it's always about, okay, 
what works and what doesn't yep. work. And that's trial and error through business. Yeah, right? and it's funny you say that because I actually think that as a bride or groom, mm-hmm. that's a really good perspective to take, which is put yourself in your guest's shoes. Uh-huh. Uh, hot tip. Hot tip. I was obsessed with charger plates for my wedding. I don't, like, again. And my husband said to me, did you notice that this person had charger plates at their wedding? And I was like, nope. I had no clue. So I think sometimes what we think is the planner or as the bride or as the groom versus what our guests are going to really notice Mm -hmm. is a huge, you know, disconnect. And I think so often we need to think about the guest experience. You know, sometimes brides will be like, well, I want to have like this espresso bar in the foyer. And I'm like, yeah, but then your guests have to walk all the way to the foyer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, it, sure, it looks nice there, mm-hmm. but what if we moved it inside or what if we did table service or, you know, like I think sometimes you have to bring forward that, well, how are the guests going to experience what you're trying to do? Mm-hmm. Because the vision is awesome, yes. but our job as the, you know, the service provider is to say this might appear strange to your guests. Or they won't even see it. Or they might not notice it. Something you're obsessing about all night long, <laughs> like nobody's going to notice and you're spending a lot of money on. Mm-hmm might not actually make that big of an impact to your guests right you know and yeah. so whether they interview people and say hey did you you've been to 10 weddings this summer did you notice this or what did you notice you know and i think that that's a really interesting conversation to have at the beginning of you know the planning is to say what what was your favorite part about the last three weddings you went to what really stood out to you mm-hmm. and i think that's where you can start to draw in what the priorities for that wedding is yeah and so, guest experience which I like that you touched on yeah and flow of event which is what especially when you're getting a venue like yours you guys are going to know how people maneuver through not only floor plans but when they're when they go to the bathroom like where your exits all of your oh my gosh yes are there enough washrooms like again as a wedding consumer you might not be thinking about that when you're renting your venue Mm -hmm. right it might be like oh there's one washroom cool there's there's a washroom Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, but how many stalls does it have, right? Because mm-hmm. if you have 200 people coming, um, that's something you want to think about. With an open bar. Yeah. That's open during speeches. In general, <laughs> yeah. So I think that's such a good point. Is yeah. It's just you have to kind of take that. And we've all been guests, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. I love being guests at our venues. Guest experience, I think, is so helpful to help drive our decisions as like consumers and also as industry people to yeah. think about how might someone interpret that. So things that, again, we think about that maybe are, you're planning a wedding for the first time, you might not think about that, mm-hmm. right? So that's a good tip. Yeah. I like that. Thanks. Um, so sticking with food. Okay. Because this is what you do. Yes. So the food, Oliver and Bonaccini is amazing. Thank you. It yeah. is delicious. Thank you. Um, so how do menus and customization work yep. if you're not getting married in a restaurant? Let's yeah. say you are at Arcadian. Sure. Yeah. Do people tell you the style of mm-hmm. menu that they want to have or do you guys make suggestions and you're like, this is what we have? Yeah. So I think that, you know, we have a menu where I find that people want to see the most customization now is like in their cocktail parties, in their mm-hmm. late nights. The I drinks, think, the cocktail drinks. Like yes. Right. It's drink. Totally. Drink. And like, like food that. stations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we might have a couple that's like they lived in Japan and they want to have like a totally like Japanese cocktail reception with like dumplings and sushi and ramen. And like that is kind of more what we're seeing. I find that people are sticking still to more traditional menus. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think partially because we have a lot of key stakeholders involved in the wedding decision. Mm -hmm. Um, So sometimes it's about appeasing a parent or, and that's totally cool, um, especially because they're usually investing in the wedding. So um, yeah, we find most of the customization happening um, sort of like pre-dinner or post-dinner. So like that late night experience and like People are going crazy. Like nowadays, it's like, oh, can we get, you know, Schwartz's in Montreal to like deliver smoked meat? And I mean, luckily, we now have amazing smoked meat in Toronto. But yeah, so we're seeing just like so much of the personality of the bride and groom coming out in those like uh, pre and post stations Mm -hmm. um, that I think is really great. We definitely do a lot of customization. You know, we live in a world where you have you know, couples that are bringing together two cultures. You have like, you know, an Italian groom and like an Indian bride and yes. how do we create like we just a, had that last yes, week in a fusion wedding right and yeah. how do we have like 
butter chicken and pasta. Or <sighs> although there was a butter chicken pizza somewhere at OMB, I haven't tried it. <sighs> But yeah, so maybe that's a thing, yeah. fusion. <laughs> but yeah, so challenges like that, I think, especially in the wedding world, is something that I think any caterer should take on as being like, of course we can do that. Because the wedding food is such a representation of the bride and groom, um, I think it's such a great space to play with creating dishes that reflect them mm-hmm. um, and their background and the things that you know make them who they are. So can I ask you about cost ranges sure, yeah. for wedding of course the venue yeah. and the catering whether the catering comes with the venue or it depends on yeah. sizing yeah. how does the cost break down sure yeah so you know I am finding nowadays that again it comes back to this it's a super competitive landscape which is great for the consumer because it means that prices have mostly gone down or you know we're getting more creative about packaging um, coming back to off season or like, you know, having those benefits of getting married in February is you get a much better price. Yeah. Um, and again, this is speaking about O and B specifically. Um, so uptown, so great. $135, I think a person to get married at the village loft, wow. all inclusive and free parking. So Ooh, yeah, big. but again, we're playing in a different uh, category there, right? So a lot of venues up there are doing it at sort of that price point. And I think people expect when you're not downtown that you're going to save money because downtown's a premium. Right. Downtown, I do think that, you know, sort of like 200 is has always been perceived as like the starting point, like the 2 to 250 range in the downtown market. Mm-hmm. Again, we have started to package and create more you know, value options for couples that aren't necessarily married to a super high-end menu. The food's still going to be great. Mm-hmm. You know, they get this premium spot. So right now we're ranging between like 140 to 175 downtown. Oh, wow. So yeah, I think that we have some really great value options. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes because of Canoe or there's sort of this like, oh, o and expensive perception or we're the cafe grill. Like it's just like, <laughs> we're either just the cafe grill or yeah. we're a canoe and we're really expensive. So right. um, we have pricing on every scale range and I would say we're super competitive. Um, in the catering world, again, it is like a, just a different pricing model. Mm-hmm. A lot of the venues we're working at, you know, they might not have like tables and chairs, but the food pricing compensates for that. So you might spend a higher price on food at the Arcadian, but mm-hmm. you're getting the tables, chairs, linens, glassware, da da da. Right. You might be, you know, spending more, um, let's say, at Steam Whistle on, you know, the renting of the tables, chairs, linens, mm-hmm. but you're getting a lower price on food. So I do think that it nets out. Okay. Yeah. And so do you guys do offsite catering or do you only do catering for your venues? Oh, we absolutely, yeah. We we love doing offsite catering. Okay. Um, and again, we are so lucky to be partnered with other amazing venues in the city. So yeah. we cater at um, Steam Whistle, uh, the ROM, the Design Exchange, um, and Thompson Landry Gallery and yeah. Distillery and Rebel. So we we are so lucky to be on those lists and to be partnered with those spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that's really great about it is it allows us to bring our clients to other venues. That's good. So you're not just on site. Yes. I want to move into a little bit of advice. Okay. Although you have given quite okay. a bit. Um, if I am a bride yes, and I call you up, first of yeah. all, what's one of the biggest misconceptions that you feel like you hear when someone calls you and is asking for information? So again, I think people don't necessarily realize how like interconnected all of our properties are. Right. So oftentimes we'll get someone that calls us about four different things. Um, so they'll be like, I'm looking at Canoe. Oh, hi, I'm looking at Arcadian right. Loft. So yeah, sort of this like, I always say our website has everything. So if you just go to, you know, allerbonachini.com, you literally have all of our venues there, um, photos, menus, like so you can kind of get inspiration. And I think that brides have an image in their head of what they want their wedding to look like. Mm-hmm. I think you would agree that mm-hmm. that's... Yep. So sometimes I'm like, I can't fight the vision. Like, <laughs> you want this? I can't fight that. Like, I don't have that. You know, I don't have a venue that's yeah. like orange and, you know, like right. I don't have neon signs or, you know, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I think that getting to understand, okay, what is, I always ask brides that, like, what is your vision for your day? Mm-hmm. You know, give me some descriptive words. Like, what do you see? And mm-hmm. then from there, and I think it's a bit different for me because I have so many spaces to work with that I can be like, okay, cool. This would, these three spots would totally fit Got you. that vision. Yep. 
Um, so yeah, when they call us, I don't think they necessarily know how much we can help them like in their search yes. of like, you know, not only our in-house venues, but also like our partner venues and also people we just like mm-hmm. and would call because hopefully we're just nice, hospitable people that, right. yeah, like, you know what? I don't have that venue, but you need to go here and I'm going to connect you with my friend who works there and like, you're going to be so happy. Gotcha. Um, yep. So that for sure, I think um, a lot of misconceptions about pricing, you know, a lot of our packages aren't put together as like, and this is going to cost you $200. Mm-hmm. So again, um, if you really love a venue, don't don't have that sticker shock right away. Like take the time to understand understand what it's going to cost. Um, like try not to make assumptions about it. Um, I think that people cast a really wide net when they're looking at venues, which I totally understand why you're shopping for price. There's so many different factors. Um, so yeah, taking the time to maybe get on the phone with somebody just to talk through some of those like preliminary pricing so is full understanding is the pricing for the space different from the catering pricing or is it a minimum you mm-hmm. had mentioned like a minimum yeah. spend yeah so we do most of our spaces do a room rental and a minimum mm-hmm. um restaurants there's no room rental but yeah okay. predominantly it's the food and beverage that you're going to be spending right the money on with yes. us yeah. um, and then just like a small room rental which will cover off on usually like security for the venue use of the loading dock like yes. us maintaining the tables and the chairs and like all those things that come included with our in-house venues security is so important i think it is especially in a downtown venue yep. i mean and i'm thinking security a lot of the times based on the equipment that from a filming perspective totally. that we have yeah. um invested in and we have in the property yeah. at that moment right yeah. um but they're mostly safeguarding like at elevators and things right exactly. making sure that people aren't crashing weddings yeah. and going up and a hundred percent yeah I'm like security and insurance. Like I can, I can yeah. do a podcast on insurance because like I think we don't want to think worst case scenario things, but the reality is that things can go wrong and mm-hmm. we want to ensure that our clients are protected mm-hmm. um, throughout their wedding experience, right? So, so what does the insurance look like then? If yeah. they book with you, is there insurance with We the ask them to get insurance. Yeah. yeah, so we do ask all of our clients to get their own general, like commercial general liability insurance, mm-hmm. which is basically going to protect them against damages Mm -hmm. so if a florist smashes sorry florist that was just an example from life Uh, (laughs) it happened you know smashes a glass door and it's eight thousand dollars and your florist doesn't have insurance you're going to be responsible for that charge Mm -hmm. nobody wants to be responsible for ten thousand dollars after their wedding because they like someone damaged something Right. right so damages for sure um you know heaven forbid there's any issues with liquor liabilities Mm -hmm. you know everyone can get named in a suit and I think that everybody it's again it's a minimal investment it's like Mm -hmm. $150 Um, but then you know that if you are going to be named in any suit for whatever reason you are protected I am like the insurance queen um, because uh, I just think that people don't think about the things that could go wrong and when you've been in the business and you've seen what can go wrong and you're like shoot, I really wish that we had, you know, thought about that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also as a business owner, you're protected against your own liabilities if your clients have insurance, right? So if your clients don't carry insurance, you're ultimately the one that's going to be responsible for paying for that damage or paying that suit. So it kind of um, minimizes your risk potential by insuring your clients and their vendors have insurance. Which was my next question yeah. because there's some venues that we've worked at downtown where they require us to have insurance and of course like we 100%. have business insurance. Yes. Um, but some of them have not asked us and some of them yep. have. So is that something you guys require from the vendors that are coming in? Yeah. If so, they're smashing glass doors. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think that most of us like, and again, like as a business owner, like you have insurance. Yeah. To me, it's not a stretch that yeah. people would have insurance, right? You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, the cake person. Like, do they really need $2 million of insurance? So I think that uh, by the client having the insurance, it kind of covers off on that. But again, it's all about wanting everybody to kind of own their share of any issues. Yes. So I totally support my colleagues that require insurance from everybody. Again, I'm like the risk assessor. So I'll be like, let me think. Like, how many people are coming? What are they doing? You know? 
are they drinking? <laughs> that yeah. kind of thing. And kind of going from there. But yeah, I just think insurance is great to have in general. That's a great piece of advice. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. Just a little hardcore. <laughs> like, yeah. No, but important. Take it seriously. Don't even get me started on life insurance, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and road of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another 45 minutes. That's funny. Yeah. Well, I think that's pretty much all the questions thank I have for you. you today. But I want to thank you for coming of in course. and sitting with us because you've shed some light awesome. on a lot of topics that we haven't talked about yet. Cool. And I think it's important. So if people want to know more information about OMB. Yeah or find you or find totally. your team yeah. where do they go and what do they do yeah so again like our website is a great resource so olivermonachini.com uh, you can follow OMB Catering which is our catering services you can follow OMB Venues mm-hmm. which I think is a really good one for brides because there's a lot of like yeah. inspiration picks and that kind of thing and okay. then they're going to pull from all of our different um, sources so that yeah. would be the one I recommend if you're choosing one love it yes Okay. Yeah. And before I let you go, yeah, because I can't let anyone out the door, okay, unless they address the audience, okay. And so I would like you to ask our listeners and watchers sure. a question, something that's been burning that you want <laughs> to know the answer to. <laughs> yes, I have it. I've been thinking about this all day. So my question would be, what do they want their guests to remember from their wedding? And I think it's just a good one to ponder on as that's they plan their day. Because we talked about that. 100%. Put yourself yeah. in your guest shoes yeah. and what do you want them to exactly. talk about two to five years down the road at Christmas? Yes. What's going to be We all have those weddings that were just like, I went to this wedding mm-hmm. and like this was it. And that's what everybody wants it to be. Of course. So. You want it to be super memorable. We want to know. Yeah. Right? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, us. Tell us. Okay. Well, cool. cheers, my dear. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh,